Hello everyone, welcome back to Simplicity Reimagined. So today I'm going to be teaching how you can make a simple DIY facial mask that you can use to protect yourself during the global pandemic of COVID-19. For these specific dimensions, I found them on another YouTube channel's video, which will be linked in the description box below. Here before you are some examples of different fabric patterns I use. There are three different materials you need to use to make this fabric mask. The first one is 100% cotton fabric. The second one is 1 8 or 1 4 of an inch of elastic band. And the last one is panel fabric for the middle layer. You can find all of these materials at Michaels, Joann's, and Walmart. Once you have selected your fabric, you need to iron it out by first spraying it with water to create a steam effect. Then go over it with a hand iron at the highest temperature for the 100% cotton fabrics. The flannel fabric can also undergo the same treatment. Here is a variety of tools that can help you during this process. I prefer the template, fabric scissors, and the embossing stylus. However, if you want to speed up the time spent, use the rotary cutter and the OmniGrid quilting ruler instead. Next, you need to measure out your mask using a ruler or a template and a black or white marking pen. For best results, use a gel pen and not a permanent marker. Pens like Sharpie will bleed through and taint your fabric. Each mask will be 6 inches by 9 inches. If you want modified measurements, refer to the description box that includes measurements for both men and children. I usually pre-measure two different ways, horizontally and vertically, to ensure that I utilize the most fabric that I can with the least amount of wasted scraps. I then proceeded to cut out more batches of fabric for other masks I plan to donate to hospice and other hospital organizations. Once that task is completed, you will need to assemble the fabrics in a certain order and direction. First, place the middle flannel layer up. Next, put the top layer of the patterned cotton fabric face up. Lastly, put the back layer of cotton fabric face down onto the top layer. Next, you will need to cut your elastic strips to the length of 7 inches. Place the elastic onto the short sides of the mask in an arc. Pin the elastic, middle layer, and top layer together. Make sure to leave a quarter of an inch away from the sides when pinning. Next, add the back cotton layer face down onto the mask. Lastly, remove the pin while still holding in place the two layers and the elastic together. Proceed to include the back layer by pinning it on top. Finally, we get to the fun part. Insert more pins if necessary to help guide the sewing process. Allow a quarter of an inch for the border and remember to backstitch especially in the areas where elastic is located. Most importantly, leave a two inch gap in order for the mask to be turned inside out. Next, cut the four corners to leave a rounded edge. Be sure not to cut too close to the stitching. Proceed to carefully turn the fabric inside out where the top and bottom layer are right side facing outwards. Then, go with your embossing stylus or any thin tip tool to push out the corners of the mask. After that, go again with the same ironing technique to prepare the mask for pinning the pleats. Next, fold on one of the shorter sides of the mask into an S shape and pin it down. Make and pin the next S shape down one inch away from the previously made one. The mask should be split horizontally into three one inch spaces with the pleats. Repeat the same process on the other shorter side of the mask. Then fold the mask hamburger style to ensure that the pleats are evenly spaced with each other. In the same fashion as before, sew a quarter of an inch border around the mask. While you take out the pins when you arrive at a pleat, hold the S in place and continue to sew over. And there you go, you have completed your first fabric mask that can be reused simply by putting it in the washer at a cold temperature or by hand washing it. And lastly, thank you to all the healthcare workers and first responders who have sacrificed everything to help protect us during this difficult time.